Texas A&M AD Ross Bjork being targeted for Ohio State's athletic director opening. Um, he has been around for quite a bit of weirdness in college football. Um, from 2012 to 2019, he was the director of athletics at Ole Miss, and he has been around at A&M since 2019. Um, I think that it's an interesting situation for Ohio State because Gene Smith has been, I think, considered one of the best athletic directors in the country um, during his decades of um, being in that position. And, you know, being at Ohio State, I got to know him pretty well. I think that's a major loss for Ohio State. The number one thing that I am very curious about when it comes to the athletic director, and the thing that jumped out into my mind is you have an athletic director, if he takes the job that is going to, um, go to a place where the coach might be going on to the next season in the hot seat who just like paid Jimbo Fisher, the biggest buyout in the history of mankind. Like what is your take on, on Ross Bjork, Chris, and you know, how important do you think athletic director hires are for the trajectory of college football programs, especially one that's in a weird um, kind of intersection of this program like Ohio State is. Yeah. Look like the Ohio state AD job for people who don't, Care about NCAA world is like the most influential AD job there is because of how big it is. It's in the it's the crown of the Big Ten. Gene Smith has is on all sorts of committees and in and, and working groups and all these things. Like Gene Smith was so influential in college sports uh, with what he did in that job. And so, if it ends up being Ross Bjork, uh, kind of a stunner, honestly. Like like when the when when. Gene Smith announced he was retiring. A lot of people thought this job could go anywhere. It could go someone outside of college sports. It could be an AD. Gene Smith has several uh, of his protégés who are ADs at places like Pitt and UCLA and Washington State. Mm -hmm. And Notre Dame just hired a, an NBC TV executive to be its next AD. And instead, it, if it ends up being the guy who just gave Jimbo paid out Jimbo Fisher a $76 million buyout an extension that he was the AD for when it happened. It's almost a sign uh, of incompetence. It's frankly stunning. And look, some people look say, Hey, you know, it, it, Ross was kind of arm twisted into that. The boosters wanted to do it. Whatever the case, if that's the case, Hey, I can't keep my boosters in order is not a selling point either. He was also the AD at Ole Miss. Well, the Hugh Freeze stuff went down and all the mm -hmm. penalties that came along with that. He is really, really good at raising money, and we've seen that in, in capital projects and stuff like this. But at a time when college sports is undergoing existential change, humongous transformational stuff, is Ross Bjork the guy who's going to lead you into something new? CBAs and help lead the sport something into something else. new because of the influence yeah. Ohio State carries. Yeah, yeah, that's we'll we'll see. Anything can, can happen, but I just I'm very surprised that that is the hire. It feels unimaginative in terms of changing the dynamic of what's going on. It's just it's another AD who raises a lot of money, and so I'm surprised. I, I'm surprised if it ends up being him uh, and not one of the many other possibilities that, uh, that were out there. Yeah. Um, it's a, it's Are, a how, like how big is the Ohio state AD job for as someone who was close to Ohio state for a long time? Like, like that pedestal. I felt like every time enormous. there was a major shift in college football, Gene Smith was at the table discussing it. Yeah. Whether it be NIL, I mean, he was on the college football playoff committee. I know a lot of athletic directors are, but everything from the committee to all these working groups and everything that he, I felt like Gene Smith's hands were in the pot of everything. And it is a very difficult scenario because on one hand, you know, being the leader of the Ohio state football program is a very difficult job in and of itself, but being somebody who has such influence in the sport in general makes it a interesting job in terms of qualifications necessary in order to, to fill those shoes. And I don't know what people think about Gene Smith. Gene Smith was around um, for a lot of years, and sometimes things went wrong at Ohio State. You know, like there, there have been scandals and things, and he's been suspended himself at times. Um, but I personally respect him and who he was and how good he was to me. And I, I think that filling uh, those shoes are going to be, you know, very, very, very hard thing to do. I think it's and, also and looking, important. Yeah. No, go, go ahead. ahead. I was going to change this. And, and, look, and, look, and looking down, looking down the road, by the way, if 
things aren't going well with Ryan Day. Is he the guy who has to make that decision if they lose to Michigan again next year? Like who who knows where things go? In year one, yeah. Would you tr- yeah. would you trust him to be the guy to find the next coach? Because Ole Miss got demonstrably better after Bjork left, and Ole Miss NIL is doing great. Like Kiffin's doing great. Basketball is doing great. You know, hired Chris Beard and all that stuff. Um, things are going well there, and so it, he was going to hire Mark Stoops to Texas A&M where the board said no. Then he came back with Mike Elko. I think we thought it was a good hire. So just that there's a lot of things in college sports and even at Ohio State could be, could have to make a basketball hire soon here. With, 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 For the with last seven sport. years, strike that, not seven. Let's go five. If there's one word that you could describe Texas A&M's football program with, what would it be? Because I have one and it's not flattering. Dysfunctional uh, will probably be That's my word. my word. Yep, same. It's a pretty tough word. Yeah. When you're talking about the person who's in charge of that, not to mention the most shocking thing I've ever seen on television in my entire life uh, was when Laramie Tunsil's gas mask uh, situation at the NFL draft happened. I've never, like, I was in shock. I couldn't move. I felt like my body was in paralysis. Like, I was so shocked by that.